is up YouTube. Welcome to another video. Now, I've got something pretty exciting to share with you guys today. Um, I think it's quite a common problem that people face when they have a pod running on Kubernetes that eats um, very high CPU and they don't know what the code is doing. So I'm going to use a technology called BPF um, to do in kernel tracing of a pod on Kubernetes using only kubectl. So let's take the worst case, you're running it on a cloud provider as a managed offering and you don't have the ability to SSH into the node. So what do you do? So in this case, I'm running on Microsoft Azure AKS. I have a pod running eating high CPU and I want to figure out what is that pod doing and I'm only going to be using kubectl. So without further ado, let's go. Okay, so before we start, um, I put a link down in the description to my Docker files repo, which is basically my desktop repository. I run everything on Linux um, in containers. So you see I have eBPF tools and what I'm going to show you is my base image that I use to build up a profiler. So what we do is we say from Ubuntu, we install all the dependencies, we add the IOVisor pre-compiled BPF tools repository, we install the, um, the dependencies needed for that, and then we go ahead and install um, those dependencies, and we go ahead and finally clone the IOVisor um, GitHub repository as well as the flame graph one. The other thing I also do is I install Docker CLI that is used in my automation to get the process ID of the container. If you're running in the cloud and you're running container D as opposed to Docker, you'll need the container D CLI. If you can find another way to get a process ID of a container, you probably don't need it at all, but I'll get into more details down the track a bit later. Okay, so I'm running a Kubernetes cluster on Azure. You can see I have a OneNode cluster ready to go. The first thing we're gonna need to do is install the right Linux headers into our profiler container in order to profile the kernel that's running here. So how do we determine the kernel without SSH into the box? Well, that's simple. I'm gonna create a deployment, just an Nginx um, container. So I go ahead and create that, and I then say kubectl get pods, and we can see our container is busy creating. And once our container is up and running, we go ahead and get a bash terminal into that container. And then once we're in, we type uname minus R, and this is the kernel version that we're going to be um, targeting. So what we need to go and do is find the Linux headers package um, for this specific kernel. You can see on my base Docker file, I do this apt get Linux headers um uname minus r this doesn't always work in the cloud so that's why we have this base docker file defined so it's quite simple i've gone ahead and googled those packages and i've tracked it down to the linux headers for azure i've got the linux headers package and then i also have a dependency here um, which is the linux azure headers so there's two debian um, packages that we're going to need to download so what i've done here we're going to use this as our base image so we go ahead and docker build that guy and then we i created this docker file called azure you can see i'm basically matching um, the kernel version between here and here and what i do is i say from my bpf tools base image then let's go ahead and curl these uh, uh, Debian packages down and install them and just create an entry point. So very, very simple um, container profiler that I've created. So what we can do now is then do Docker push and push that up to Docker Hub. So we've looked at our monitoring and we've noticed something really odd that we're running unusually high CPU. There's nothing else running on this node other than one pod. If I do kubectl get pods, we have this one pod called bad deploy. Um, it is eating up most of the CPU on this box and we want to figure out why. So now using only kubectl, I made a little bash script that we can use to profile that pod. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to use that. So I have a GitHub repository called uh, CPU Performance Analysis for Containers. Um, it's right there, link in the description. And I have a Kubernetes folder where I also show you the example of the bad pod. Um, I've got example.net code, which is basically running and generating CPU. Um, and I show the full guide and steps to reproduce everything I'm gonna show you today. 
so the first thing we want to do is say kubectl get pods and we want to do a wide so we have the name of the pod and we have the name of the node now in this folder i have a kubernetes folder so i'm going to cd into that guy and then we have our flame get script so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say flame get and i'm going to say we want to target this node so i'm going to go ahead and select that node and we want to target this pod and we're going to target a container the container's name is bad app and what we also want to do is profile it for 15 seconds in this case and then what we want to do is pass in our profiler image and that is going to be this image up here that we created with the right linux headers so we call that bpf tools and i tagged it with the right tag and then we're going to go ahead and run that and that's going to basically create that profiler pod on that node it's going to use docker cli to grab the process id of that container um, and then use bpf to profile it for 15 seconds then it's going to basically watch until that is done it's going to watch the that profiler pod for a log when that is done it's going to kubectl cp the flame graph out of that container and it's going to run <clears throat> basically pipe the bpf data into flame graph um, produce a scalable vector graphic and then copy it out so the shell script is very very basic and i'll show you guys in a second so this is very cool very quick um, it created the profiler pod started profiling the container and when that was done it pulled out using kubectl cp um, the scalable vector graphic and it's gone ahead and deleted uh, the profiler so very basic um, shell scripting that we used here if i do ls we can see we have our um, flame graph produced and it's right there so i can go ahead and reveal that guy there we go so we have a flame graph um, created we can see there's our process that we targeted so our .NET sample application it's used this is pretty much 100 percent of all the the samples and as we go up the stack we can see that 100 percent of the samples is pretty much our one class um, um, it's running under main method there's a class called busy with a method called stay stay busy so this is the guy that's keeping cpu really busy so now we can we can take this information that we know and we can head out to the source code which is this dotnet application we can look at program.cs and we can see in main method it's creating a, a class called busy and running a method called stay busy and then that points us to the um, inefficient code that is potentially eating up all the CPU. So the motivation behind this tool for me was to basically have a quick one-liner that when a developer comes up and says, hey, my uh, microservice is using 100% CPU or you, know, you wanna know what the code is doing, I can just go and run that one-liner or I can give that one-liner to the developer and they can basically become self-sufficient and get this type of data out. Um, if you wanted to do this manually, it would take a lot of your time um, and sometimes, you know, setting up the profiler, SSHing in onto the host, and all of these things, doing it manually can become a lot of effort. So I wanted to create a one-liner where I can just quickly run it, get some feedback, um, and also be able to empower developers to get some of this valuable information themselves. So let's take a look and see what this does. Um, I do some pretty basic help text um, where we take in a node, a pod, container name, um, we take in the time we want to profile for as well as our image profiler i parse that um, into environment variables then i go and make sure we these environment variables are not missing so they're all pretty much mandatory um, and then what we do is we 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 take our um, yaml file for the profiler so i have a predefined profiler deployment yaml already um, in this repo it's right over there uh, and what we do is we replace all these pointers with these environment variables so we tell this profiler um, yaml that we this is the tool to deploy the, the profiler image we want to use um, that de that's dependent on the cloud provider the image we just built earlier um, the the pod that we want to um, target the number of seconds we want to profile the container we want to target and then the um, the node that we're wanting to target and then we what we do is we just kubectl apply that straight up then what we do is we run in a loop and we just wait for that profiler to start running. So very basic loop. We just say kubectl get pods, wait for the text running. 
um, you might find more optimal way to write this I think this is just makes it work and then what I do is I go into a second loop and I wait for the profiler to complete because as soon as this profiler starts running it'll start profiling the pod um, and then we run in a loop here and we say kubectl logs and we're basically just going to look for the message profiling complete that's how I tell that okay my flame graph is ready and then what we do is we do kubectl cp so we copy the scalable vector graphic out of the pod and into this working directory and then we go ahead and delete the profiler pod so very very simple very basic a lot can go wrong here so i wouldn't recommend running this blindly in your production environment and unless you understand these few steps because a couple of things can go wrong for example the profiler might not might not enter a running state meaning that this loop will just go on infinitely and you'll have to kill it and clean up the pod um, the profiler pod and the other thing that can go wrong here is if something um, doesn't work in terms of pro, uh, BPF it can, it, this message profiling complete may never show um, which means it'll be stuck in a loop you got to clean it up and then kubectl cp if there was no scalable vector graphic produced this line will fail uh, but this is good enough to get this process automated I'll give you a one-liner you can run it get a flame graph out and immediately understand you know what is my application doing let's take a look at the profiler so this is very very basic very simple um, if you watched my previous video on container performance analysis i basically ran all this stuff manually so this is just automating it with a bash script so i create a pod call it ebpf profiler um, these are some of the environment variables i basically just uh, said at replace so what we do here is we um, get the container ID using Docker PS um, and we just grab. So what we do here is we grab the container ID and then we do Docker inspect to get the process ID. And then what we do is we um, say how many seconds do we want to uh, profile for? And here we run BCC precompiled uh, BPF tool called profile.py. And we profile on a 99 frequency for the amount of seconds we pass in for the process ID we're targeting. And then we pipe that over into flame graph and we produce a scalable vector uh, image, which is just a graphic, uh, the name of the container. And then we just sleep for 30 seconds. This gives us enough time to copy the flame graph out. And yeah, so to make this happen, we pass in environment variables. We have to pass in these mounts. So we pass in the Docker sock so we can do Docker inspect. Um, if you can find an alternative to not having to rely on Docker and another way to get the process ID, that'll be quite cool. If you want to let me know down in the comments, um, because then I don't need Docker CLI and I don't need to mount in the Docker sock. The other thing we have to do is mount in kernel debug and sys fsbpf. Um, and then here we do a node selector, very simple way of targeting the node. So the profiler will run on the same node where that pod is that we're looking to profile. And you might have a image pool secret if you want to run this on a private, um, if you want to push a uh, pull your image from a private repo, you might need that. But all my stuff is just on Docker Hub, so you can go ahead and use this yourself. So hopefully that was uh, really useful for you guys. I'll definitely be taking a look at a lot more BPF tools in the future and how I can use them on Kubernetes. And I think this is a really, really great tool to have as part of your DevOps tool set um, to profile pods on Kubernetes. So let me know down in the comments if this helped you. No, let me know also what sort of stuff you'd like me to cover in the future videos. And until next time, peace.